Hi everyone, welcome to Living a Balanced Life with Julio. My name is Julia Dupoku, I'm a registered nurse and a diabetes educator. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about sick day management. So what you do when you're sick, when you have diabetes. If you're interested, please stay with me. So when you have diabetes and you're ill, our body releases hormones that fight infection. So anybody, when anyone is sick, our body releases hormones that fight infection. And it's the same hormones that can cause our blood sugar to go really high. And because of that, it can lead to many complications like um, diabetic ketoacidosis or HHS for people that have type 2 diabetes. It can make you very dehydrated. It can make your infection uh, much worse because the hormones that your body is releasing to fight infection is the same hormones that can cause blood sugar to um, level to go really high. So it makes it really hard for your body to release insulin to uh, manage your blood sugar um, while you're sick when you have diabetes. So it's important as a, someone with diabetes to make sure that you have a plan that you have in place and uh, that can help you to manage your uh, illness, manage while you're ill and things to help you prevent yourself, your blood sugar from going too high and to educate the people around you like your family members, your immediate family member that you live with or people you live with, what to do um, to help you uh, to assist you when you when you are ill. Right? So make sure that you are talking to your diabetic educator so you have their number just in case that you need to reach them, that you have a number that you can reach them at, um, like a healthcare provider that's close by you that you can go to a clinic that can, uh, you can get some help there um, because we want to refrain from going to emergency every time we're, um, we're sick, right? Because the more we go to emergency, the more we're introduced to new illnesses and new um, infections and all of that. So it's important to know what to do so you're in charge of your health so you're not running to the emergency services every time that you're ill, right? So it's important to have your diabetes educator, your endocrinologist, like a diabetes specialist, have the number that you can call someone to kind of walk you through what to do if you're ill. But as a, as a um, someone with diabetes and because diabetes is a chronic illness, it's important for you to be in charge of your health so you know what to do if you're ill. So when you're ill from a flu or cold or um, any kind of infection, um, expect your blood sugar to be high because remember when we're ill our body releases um, hormones these hormones are supposed to help us fight infection but it's the same hormones that's causing our blood sugar to go up why because our body um, needs the energy to deal with the infection and our energy is the glucose which is sugar so whenever we're ill our sugar level will go up as suspected but you're supposed to you know do all you can to keep the sugar under control because when the sugar is out of control it's hard for you to heal right when the sugar is out of control it's hard for you to feel better because it's like almost like a vicious cycle so it's important to have um, medication on board that you can uh, continue to take when you're ill um, to keep yourself hydrated to make sure you're eating regularly make sure if you can exercise you're doing some exercising whatever helps you maintain your blood sugar to bring your blood sugar down that's what you do but if you are vomiting you have diarrhea um, you're not able to tolerate any fluid, so you're not you can't keep any fluids down because you're you know you're constantly nauseous and vomiting. If you're not able to tolerate any food, we can a person can get dehydrated very easily. And if you're able to eat, stay away from sugar containing fluids. If you're not able to eat and let's say you're vomiting or uh, having diarrhea and you're not able to tolerate actual food, that's when you need to replace it with um, some um, with fluids that contain a little bit of sugar. Only if you're not able to tolerate the food. Because remember, you're getting natural sugar from your food. So we don't want you to drink juice on top of that. That will make your sugar go way too high. But if you're not able to eat and you're not able to tolerate any kind of food, then you can replace it with um, carbohydrate from um, liquid. From liquid. So you know, drinking um, a little, uh, drinking juice, like um, half a cup of juice, will give you about 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrate. So you want to replace the same amount of carbohydrate that you're eating through food with fluids that has uh, sugars in it, right? But if you can't tolerate food, I can't stress this enough, don't drink juice on top of it. If you can't tolerate food, but you're able to tolerate fluid, this this way you can have um, things like glucerna um, or insure as a meal replacement if you're able to tolerate, and that's fine, right? Because that replaces your meal. But the most important thing is when you're ill, you continue to take your medication as prescribed, unless otherwise advised by your healthcare provider, right? Because some medications, when you're ill and you're dehydrated, and you take them, you can further 
make the dehydration worse. So this is why it's important for you and your healthcare providers, your diabetes educators, and your endocrinologists to come up with a plan that fits you what to do um, when you're sick because everybody is on different medications, right? So um, if you go to Diabetes Canada website, there's a sick day management and it tells you what uh, medication to stay away from when you're ill because some medication like diuretics that helps you um, get rid of fluids, that's, that's how the medication works. If you are taking that medication and you're already vomiting and have diarrhea and you're dehydrated and your sugars is high that will make it much worse so sometimes when you're ill and you're not able to tolerate um, certain fluids um, your healthcare provider will tell you to stay away from diuretics um, that that fluid uh, medication that makes you pee out a lot or um, some of the medication that control your protect your heart and your kidney like ACE, inhib um, the ACE inhibitors and um, beta blockers that you take to manage blood pressure and to manage your kidneys sometimes when you're very dehydrated the, um, your healthcare provider will tell you to stay away from those medications so it's important to um, come up with a plan the next time you go see your diabetes educator or your um, endocrinologist tell them if I'm sick and I'm not able to eat and I'm you know I'm vomiting and I'm having diarrhea and all of this is happening what medication should I stay away from and then you can come up with a plan they'll write it for you so you have that just in case right because you don't want to wait till you're ill and then you're scrambling to see what to do right but when in doubt call your family doctor and get instructions what should i do this is how i'm feeling i haven't said that if you are ill and you um, it's lasting over 24 hours where you're not able to tolerate any fluids you're not able to eat much you're continuous you're continuously vomiting and having loose stools or diarrhea then you need to go to the emergency department because at this point if especially if you're someone that has type 1 diabetes you can get very dehydrated where you get um, diabetic ketoacidosis which is a condition that happens when um, you're you're ill from um, your diabetes where your sugar level can go too high it can make you dehydrated do it get to a point where you need fluid you need intravenous fluid you need more insulin if you're uh, on board for type 1 you need more insulin to be able to manage that diabetes ketoacidosis is a, as an emergency so if you are vomiting more than two times and you're having diarrhea and it's lasting over um, close to 24 hours you need to seek medical attention because you need um, urgent care if you have type 2 diabetes on the other hand because with type 2 diabetes, your body is still able to make some insulin. You get still dehydrated. You can still get very dehydrated, but um, you don't get ketoacidosis. But it's still, still, it's still emergency that if you're vomiting like two times and you're having diarrhea, that you seek medical attention because you might, you will need fluid. If you're not able to tolerate fluid, you might need intravenous fluid, and then sometimes you might need um, insulin. Even if you're not naturally not taking insulin at home, you might need insulin while you're at the hospital just to get things um, under control to um, treat the hyperglycemia so your body can heal and you can get rid of the infection or whatever is causing the illness so it's important for us uh, for you as a diabetic um, um, to know these things and it's important to work with your diabetic educator to make sure you come up with a plan that fits you and another important tip is you should know what your target is for diabetes anyone that um, before meal so if you're checking your sugar at home um, before meal uh, in between meals and fasting the recommended target is between four to seven so four millimoles to seven millimoles per liter um, this is what your blood sugar should um, should be before meals. If two hours after meal, your sugar should be running around um, between five to 10 um, millimoles per liter right, after you eat. And that's two hours after you eat. So if you're going to measure your blood sugar after meal, you have to wait two hours because that's how long it takes your body to process um, the, the sugar from the food. Two hours after, if it's between five and 10, that's good. When you're ill, like I said, your blood sugar is going to be much higher, right? Normally, anyone that has diabetes and you're monitoring your blood sugar, you know where you normally are in terms of what your sugar is in the morning um, before you eat and what your sugar tends to be after meal, right? If your sugar is falling within the targets that we're talking about and then all of a sudden you're ill and it's going to 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, 20, then you need to get some help, you need to get some medication, right? If you are on um, oral medication because you have type 2 diabetes, you continue to take your medication and then you um, call your diabetic educator or your healthcare provider to get advice. And then they can tell you which medication to stop and which medication to keep. Um, like I said, because you might be dehydrated, sometimes insulin might be started temporary just to help you heal and to help you get rid of the high sugar so you can um, go back to your normal um, 
your normal management of diabetes. But it's very important that you don't wait till last minute, that you seek attention as quickly as possible when you are ill, so um, you don't get into yourself in trouble. People can have low sugar, right? It doesn't happen often, but if you do have a low sugar, and a low sugar when you have diabetes is any blood sugar lower than four. So when your blood sugar is lower than four, that's hypoglycemia, meaning your sugar is too low and that you can get into it, um, you, you can get into trouble. So hypoglycemia could be caused by you know not eating, skipping meals, um, not eating on time. Um, you know, like if your medication, uh, you take medi you get too much of your medication, or if it's insulin, take too much of your insulin, that can cause hypoglycemia. If you do have type one diabetes, or if your mother or our father with a child with type one diabetes, it's important to have uh, emergency diabetes treatment for um, low blood sugar. So glucagon is a medication that um, is an injectable that you should have in case of emergency. So in case of emergency where a person blood sugar is too low for them um, and they can't function, they can't swallow, about to pass out from low sugar, you need fast acting sugar that um, you can get to them. Because if, you, if they can't swallow and you're shoving something down their throat, you can choke them. A person can choke that way. So if the person is not able to tolerate anything because they, they, you know, they're almost passing out from the low sugar, that's not time to shove things down their throat because then they can choke. So in that case, of course, if you don't have any access to any medication, you don't know, just call 911, try to get some help for the person. But if you have, type 1 diabetes or even type 2 diabetes and you're taking insulin have glucagon on um as an emerge in your emergency kit just in case that your sugar go low you can inject the glucagon um it's as a mother or as a, a caregiver of someone with diabetes you should know how to do that it helps you can help you save their life and as someone with diabetes it's very important to have plans um, for all these in place to help you in case that you're ill so whenever we're under mental stress, our sugar level goes up. Whenever we're under any kind of stress, our body sees all of that, of that the same way. It gives you the energy to deal with it, therefore your blood sugar will go up. So it's important that when these things are happening and you're like, I don't know why my sugar is going up, like I'm not sick or my sugar keeps going up, it could be that you're very stressed. And in that case, you know, do what you can um, to bring the sugar down, which is the, um, exercising, eating healthy, taking your medication, trying to control your stress as much as you can. And then if you need help, need someone to help you deal with the stressor, to come up with strategies with the stressor, you know, book appointment to see your doctor, to see your endocrinologist, see your diabetes educator. Um, they can refer you to resources that you might not have access to, and that can help you deal with that stress, that can help you improve your blood sugar. So the blood sugar target for anyone with diabetes, uh, before meal or fasting, four to seven meals moles per liter two hours after a meal if you want to check anywhere between five to ten millimoles per liter is um, the target that's the blood sugar at the moment when you check listen to your body if something is wrong you're the best person to know get the help that you need out there put things in place to help you if you have diabetes have signs that you can access to just in case your sugar go too low and also um, if your sugar go too high know what to do if you're vomiting diarrhea dehydrated and it keeps getting worse seek medical attention go to the so you can get the medication and the treatment that you need speak to your healthcare providers put plans in, in place to help you or for you to stay in charge because it's your health you're in charge it's your body you have to be the master of your own health so until next time take care if you have any uh, questions let me know if you have any comments if you have any tips that you'd like to share let me know so i can let everyone know so we can all learn together and live a healthy balanced life until next time take care and please subscribe to support me to support you take care